So debugging is a very, very important task of programming. The English word debug is a combination of two words, D and bug. This is basically about understanding where the bugs are in your program or why is your program not working as you expect it to, right? Debugging is an extremely effective tool for you to understand why your pro program is not working as you expect it to work. And the debugger, the debugging, the, uh, Python has something called PDB, which stands for, the P stands for Python and DB stands for debugger. The Python debugger is an interactive debugging environment. It's extremely useful. Unlike other languages, Python has one of the simplest and easiest to use debuggers. Now we'll see how debuggers help us understand logical blogs and how, and let's, let's look, at, look, at, look at an example so that we understand it better. Here I have a simple program where I have a function called sequence, right? What does the sequence do? It takes a number n as input and for i equals to range n, which means between 0, 1, 2, so on, so forth, n minus 1, it will keep printing the values. That's what this function does. So if I say sequence 5, it prints all the numbers from 0 to 4, right? This is what this function does. But let's understand how the control flow occurs. Since this is function definition, this code doesn't run automatically. The, the function execution starts here. The control flow starts here. Now, as soon as it, as soon as this function is called, it now goes here, right? With n equals to 5. Here, what happens? Your value of n here, because you've given 5 as the input, your n becomes 5, right? And then, while you run this loop, the value of i keeps changing because the initial value of i will be 0, the next value of i will be 1, 2, so on, so forth. And all these values will be printed before you return, right? So, this for loop keeps running iteratively. And when this for loop runs, the value of i changes. So the value of i changes as this as this function, as this func as this loop executes. And when it becomes equal to n, you exactly come out of it with a return statement, right? Now the function of a debugger is to help you stop the execution of a program at any point and see what is happening exactly there. So for example, let's assume I want to stop exactly at this point when the function runs right so i start here i go into this function and whenever i come to this line so whenever i come to this line i want to stop or i want to break point so this is also called break point in many languages right i want to break point or i want to stop the execution of this function and at this point i want to see what is the value of i and n let's say so what should be the idea what should be the value of i and n the first time you come here the value of i should be zero value of i n should be 5. The next time you come into this loop, the, your i should be 1, your n should be 5. Second time you come into this loop again to the same statement, it should be 2 and 5, etc. so on and so forth. This is what we expect, right? Now, can I stop my program in between and see these values as the loop runs step by step? It's literally having the control of stopping a program while it executes and understanding what's happening to our variables. Now let's see an example of how to do it. This is extremely powerful. Okay. To do that, you have to import PDB. PDB is this module which has all of the key functions that you need for debugging. Now if you look at it, between the previous program and this program, there are a few changes. This is a new line, right? I have added this new line called pdb.setTrace. This can be thought of as setting a trace point or setting a break point here. So what happens is whenever your program, so what happens in this program, your program starts here, first it imports the thing, then it starts here, when it starts here, it comes in here. Once it goes into this for loop, what is the value of n? n is 5. What is the first value of i? i is 0. So what happens when you come first time here? The first time this function is, execu this function is executed, the PDB, the Python debugger, stops the execution and gives you the control to interactively query things. So here I can ask, what is the value of i? I can ask, what is the value of n? Right? I can ask these questions. And when I'm satisfied, I can say, continue running the program here. And when it continues running the program, it runs this line, it prints the value. And in the for loop, it again goes back here, right? Next time when it comes here again, it stops. It stops the execution of the program. At this line, wherever I set this pdb.setTrace, it stops the execution of the program there gives me control so that I can understand interactively what's happening. Let's see this in execution, okay? I've already executed this program. You can see this 
uh, from the fact that it's already running here right so when i run this program i get this right it stopped here right now if i just say list and enter okay list tells me where am i exactly right now so when the, the so these are all called pdb commands right so i get a, i get a line like this pdb and i can type whatever i want i typed list here right if you notice i typed list here what it tells me is first i want to understand where am i because i can set multiple breakpoints right in a function so what it says is you are right here you are exactly at this point in your function execution this is where you are now i want to understand what is the value of now i want to understand what is the value of i so pi p basically here stands for print i want to print the value of i it says the value of i is 0 what is the value of n it is 5 right so the key so here that's, that's what i've listed here right your list basically here tells you where you are in the program p is the shorthand for print now if i want all the local variables that are there right what are all the local variables here in my function here in my function here at this point at this point where the execution has stopped my local variables are i and n if i want to print all the local variables that are available here what can i do i can simply say print locals or p locals when I say p locals and enter, it tells me that the value of i right now is 0 and the value of n is 5. That's what that that's what the program should look like, right? Because it's the first time. So what happened? You imported and then you went to sequence of 5. It went in here, right? What is the first value of i? First value of i should be 0, right? Because it's range n. What does range n mean? You have values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So first time it comes to this line, when and in my in my pdb in my pdb when i say print locals it prints i equals to 0 and n equals to 5 which is what we expect right okay everything looks good now if i want to continue running so i can just use the command c what c does is it continues the execution it stopped the execution here right it literally stopped the execution here wherever i said pdb dot set trace now if i say continue it will continue executing till the time it again comes back to this line. So it, it continues the execution till the time it comes back to the pdb.set trace line. Okay. So let's ex let's continue. Okay. So now we, when I say C and enter. Okay. So it has continued. Now if I say list again, so that I understand where am I now. Okay. I'm back to this line. And now if I say P locals, what should be the value of I and N now? In the second iteration, your I should be 1 and N should be 5. Let's check if that's true. Let's just check if that's true, right? When I print this, I get i equals to 1 and n equals to 5 because this is second iteration, right? Right? Because what, what's happening? When Where is this line? This line here. Now I'm at the second iteration. I can, I can stop it anywhere. Oftentimes, we set multiple breakpoints like this in a program to understand uh, what exactly is happening at various locations especially for mathematical programs debuggers are are heaven sent they're super useful now let's again continue when i continue okay it's continuing again now if i say p locals what happens now sorry if i say p locals what happens now in the next iteration i get i equals to 2 and n equals to 5 i can continue again and now when i say p locals i get i equals to 3 and n equals to 5 this is how we expect it to work right so there is a command called h H gives you all the functions you can use here, all the debugger functions that you have, right? See, uh, for example, we used we used uh, we used p here, we used p here, right? There are functions like next, which will help you run the next line. There are functions like step, etc. There are multiple functions here. Uh, there is continue C that we used, right? C stands for continue. You can also write the full word continue, or you can say print itself. Some people prefer instead of saying print, they, P, they just say the whole word print, which is perfectly all right. Now the question is, while this program is executing, suppose you want to leave in between. Right now, what is our values? Let's print locals so that we know where we are right now. We are at i equals to 3 and n equals to 5. The loop goes from i equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we reach till here in the loop. This is not yet done. But I am like, okay, I understood what is happening. I want to quit now. How do you quit? You just say Q. You simply say Q and you can you can quit the whole program. 
you can quit the debugger sorry not the program right if i say q it simply gives me an error but i come out of the loop right and this and this program has has finished execution right this is a very very important toolkit again typically my favorite my favorite functions that i use are p locals i use continue a lot i use help whenever i don't know a function right i use list a lot to understand where is the where have i stopped right now similarly you have p globals which will print all the global variables having said this there are other commands like where where tells you where you are exactly down continue quit all these are useful commands again as i told you there are many many commands here so when when we typed h you, we got this big list of commands right sometimes you might have to use some of these so the documentation for them are, is very very easily available you can just google up you can say pdb python debugger and if you say next you'll get interesting uh, interesting documentation what next does so there are a lot of these commands of course different people prefer to use different functions my favorites have been these but of course the same thing can be achieved with multiple ways suppose you don't want to set too many breakpoints and you want you want to set a breakpoint and continue line by line by line execution you want to see it through so that's where your functions like uh, so your commands like next will help you a lot now having said this see we have done all of this in in our ipython notebook we can do the same thing in a terminal or a command prompt right i'll show you how to do this so command prompt is what you have in windows and terminal is what you have in your linux or mac boxes okay since i have a mac i'll show you how how this can be used right i'm on my mac uh, i'm on the mac terminal right now and let me show you my so vim is basically a text editor in uh, in linux and macintosh systems right so this is my program this is exactly like my program right what, this is what we saw right we have a function called sequence so let let me just explain you this this is exactly like what we saw right we have a function called sequence and i've set my breakpoint here this is exactly the same thing that we saw but it is written in a python func in a in a python in a in a file in a python in a dot py file unlike the last time okay so now let's see so this is my python file right so i can i can get out of this file right so this is so i'm i've written my all my all of my commands in python underscore debug dot py right now what i can do here is i can just run it i can say python python underscore debug dot py because because my because my code has has the python debug statement like this because my code has um, sorry let me just go up because my code has this line the set trace line right it stops at that line now i can i have the same thing what i have done here what i have done in my ipython notebook all the same commands will work i typed h and i got help right now i can type uh, p i it will print i or p locals okay so i can say continue right and i can say p locals again okay i can again say continue and i can say p locals so what you have done in your in your ipython notebook can be done in the command line also okay if you want to exit you can just say q you have exited right very simple so there are two ways of doing it some people prefer to do it in command line like people like me who have been programming on command line for years like my favorite way to code used to be on vim vim is a vim is a unix based editor it's a very very old school thing but very beautiful editor very powerful for those of us who have who have who have used unix and uh, linux and uh, macintosh systems a lot okay having said that the same thing today could be achieved in ipython notebooks okay so there is no i don't have a specific preference earlier a few years ago i used to use the python uh, the pdb in in command line today i most often times i just use it in in ipython notebooks especially for machine learning applications so i hope you enjoy debugging your programs and understanding where things are failing so if you want to understand i understand where function where, where your code is not working as expected pdb is a tool to use and set trace sets breakpoints to help us stop wherever you want this will help us stop wherever you want in a function and helps you debug your pro your programs very efficiently and by the way i have seen many other debuggers i have seen java debugger c debugger c++ debuggers python debugger is one of the easiest to use and one of the most interactive debuggers that i have personally come across